Welcome to this short taster video on using Rational Team Concert for complex systems and software development. The demo starts in the DOORS requirements database, where we use its integration with RTC to create an implementation request for some work to be performed on a Rational Rhapsody model. We then step through a workflow where we use RTC to manage both the changes to the model and the formal review process that we've enacted on the project. Let's right click and choose Submit to create a task to do some systems modeling against this requirement. This presents Susan with a dialog allowing her to create a task to do some work. Let's give the task a summary, such as add solar power stuff, and allocate it to the requirements analysis team to do the work. We'll plan it for our M2 requirements analysis phase and set its priority as high. When I click OK, this is going to create a task in the Jazz database. A user in Jazz will be able to navigate the requirement from this task using its URL. If I close the report dialog and click on the links, then you'll notice that an external link to the task has been added to the requirement indoors. This will allow me to navigate to the implementation task and view it using RTC's web client. This time, rather than log in as Susan, let's log in as Pete, the project manager. In his role as project manager, Pete has different needs from the JAS tooling than Susan. Rather than do the actual work, he wants to view the status of the project and balance resources. He can view the project status from any location. He doesn't need to install any tools. Even a handheld device like a tablet computer could be used for this. One of the great things about RTC is the concept of a dashboard, a customized web page that displays the status of the project using graphical widgets and feeds. The information presented here is live. Live planning is a very interesting concept. In a traditional development team, obtaining up-to-date information is often a time-consuming process involving interrupting team members, updating spreadsheets and sending lots of reminder emails. In RTC, the project manager doesn't need to do this. They can focus instead on prioritising work and removing impediments. We can see in the project dashboard, for example, that there is a feed that automatically shows the tasks that Susan just created. Dashboards are fully customizable. In our CM process, we have enacted a review process. So we've added a widget here that lists the pending approvals. We've tried to arrange a dashboard so the most useful stuff is towards the top left. One of the key summary views here is the plan. This graphic renders a very high level view of the plan's health. The green indicates the work done, the red indicates work not done that was estimated to have been done by this stage in the plan, and the white indicates that there's still time to catch up. If we click on the plan, we can navigate to a more detailed view. The plan view is really a filtered view of the work items in the database for a particular release, milestone or iteration. We can view the plan in many different ways. In the work breakdown view, we can see the work items allocated to users, and the progress that has been recorded against these. The progress bar graphic allows us to very quickly see that Mark is making less progress than was estimated by this stage of the plan, whereas Susan is making more progress than was estimated. Let's have a look at the plan time view. The plan time view is similar to the work breakdown view, but also shows schedule information. Note that down the bottom we can see the new tasks that we added and that it's currently unassigned. In this view, the bar is showing load by default rather than progress. The load is the amount of time estimated for the work items versus the amount of time a team member has available. One of the great things about project transparency in this way is it enables us to detect schedule problems early and resolve them. Notice that Susan is not overloaded because she's got lots of white space in her load bar. Let's allocate the new Add Solar Power task to Susan by dragging it onto her. Interestingly, her load stayed the same. This is because the task has not yet been estimated. When we set the estimate to one day, we can see that a load goes up. Live planning is one of the key features of RTC. It's also possible for developers to take much more ownership of the tasks and estimates without interruption, fostering more progressive notions of such as self-organized teams. So Susan now has a new task allocated to her. Let's log in as Susan to see her view of the project. Rather than using the web client, Susan is using the RTC Eclipse client. This is essentially an Eclipse workspace, meaning that she can access tools that are in Eclipse, such as Rhapsody. The use of a thick client also means that Susan can work offline if wanted. 
One of the more revolutionary things about RTC for configuration management is that it's designed using web technology. This means that it works over a wide area network, transcending traditional geographical and organizational barriers. Here we can see that Susan is actually working in Rhapsody. In the My Work view, we can see that there is a new high priority work item in her inbox. Let's get Susan to accept this task by dragging it from her inbox into her current work list. If we double click the task, then we can open it up. Since it's a high priority task, Susan's going to start work immediately. So she can choose start working from the pull down list. Let's also say it is the current work item by clicking in the arrow next to the task. The task now appears in the bottom of the team concert workspace. Let's go back to the use case diagram and make a small change to illustrate how changes are tracked using RTC. We'll get Susan to add a new use case called Recharge Meter Reader. And we'll add a new actor called The Sun. And say that The Sun is associated with the use case. Let's save it and see what RTC did to track the changes. In RTC, changes are tracked automatically. If we go to the Pending Changes view, we can see what has changed in Susan's local workspace. Here we can see that there's one unresolved change to a file. At this point, let's get Susan to check in her changes as a new chain set. A chain set is a consistent set of files that need to be delivered together. They help us preserve model integrity and can be used to track all the change files associated with a particular work item. Because Susan selected the task as a current work item, RTC automatically associates a change set with the task. The changes are now currently checked into a server-side repository workspace. This supports backups, as well as allowing Susan to switch machines if she wants to, or other users to view her workspace if needed. To propagate the changes to the rest of the team, Susan would normally right-click and choose Deliver to transfer her changes to the stream. Note, however, that when we try this, the Team Advisor view pops up telling Susan that the preconditions for delivery have not been met. This is because the process we have asked RTC to enforce has been customized to add a review precondition to the delivery operation. The purpose here is to illustrate the ability of RTC to automate process controls to ensure compliance without requiring laborious steps. Let's go back to the Pending Changes view now, and instead of delivering the changes, we'll get Susan to submit this change set for review. This pops up a dialog that enables her to add a reviewer, in this case Pete, an architect on the project. Susan can choose to suspend the change set here as well. This will enable her to work on other tasks while the work item is under review. The suspend feature in RTC is also useful for context switching. For example, if a critical defect comes in, a developer can suspend a change set in order to fix a new problem. Let's switch to Pete now is using the Eclipse client at his desk. In the Eclipse client, Pete can see the work items that require approval in a number of different ways. For example, in the My Work Item Changes feed, Pete can see a new work item review request has come in. Let's get Pete to click on the request to open up the task. Note that it jumps straight to the Approvals tab and highlights that the review status is pending. Before approving the review, Pete can click on the Links tab and take a look at the change set. Double click in the change set will open up the changes in the Change Explorer. Pete can then right click and choose Open in Compare Editor to view the differences. Because the changes are to Rhapsody files, RTC will ask him if he wants to launch the Rhapsody diff merge tool to view the differences. In the Rhapsody diff merge, we can filter the browser to view diffs. We can also right click and choose to view the graphical differences on the diagram. For example, here we can see that an act only use case were added by Susan. Having reviewed the chain set, let's close the diff merge and then return to the task in RTC. On the approval tab, we can set the review status to approved. 
let's add a comment to the overview tab to give Susan a bit of positive encouragement. Let's switch workspaces back to Susan now and try and deliver the work again. Inspecting the team dashboard in Susan's workspace, we can see a feed of the events happening on the project. Let's double click the work item to open it up. In the quick information panel here, we can see the task was approved and we can also see the comments that Pete made. If we want to, we can click on the History tab. This shows a time-based audit trail of the events that have happened on the work item. This is useful for formal quality audits, but also for simple day-to-day -day activities such as finding out who to talk to about particular changes. Let's get Susan to try and deliver the changes again. I'll open up the Pending Changes view and choose Resume on the Change Set. Once resumed, I can then choose to deliver and resolve the changes. This will set the task to a resolved state as well as propagating the changes to the stream. Let's have a final look in the RTC project dashboard from Pete's perspective. Note that the feed shows that we have a recently closed task. If we open up the plan, we can see that the work item is no longer in the work breakdown view as it's now closed. We can also take a quick look at a number of other views in the plan. In the ranked list view, for example, we could prioritize a task, for example, so that high value and low cost things are done first. In the task board here, we can view the status of the work items. Here we can see that the add solar power task is now closed. This concludes the demonstration. To summarise, we've shown in this short taste of video some of the core capabilities of Rational Team Concert for collaboration, automation and reporting. In particular, the ability to collaborate in real time in the context of work you are doing, including drawing resources from multiple sites if needed. In addition, we've shown the ability of RTC to provide visibility into accurate project health information drawn directly from actual work, and to automate the auditability of your processes by managing artifacts and their relationships across the life cycle. The demo used a customized process to illustrate how process controls can be enacted through rule-based process guidance, enabling teams to develop and mature practices that can be repeated across projects to raise quality and predictability. In short, we've seen a small glimpse at how RTC can increase your ability to innovate through collaboration, automation and reporting. If you have any further questions, then please don't hesitate to contact your local IBM team for more information.